shipped out that they are on linen, whereas the Simon extract versions are on cotton. They also show evidence of Warhol's hand. They're underpainted, whereas the Simon extract versions are not. But that's the point. These versions were different, made with Andy's approval to be hung at a party, not in a gallery. Simon submitted his painting to the authentication board again, but this time with a fully documented history, just as Vincent Fremont had suggested. I sent them everything. I sent them the video clips, I sent them the photographs, I sent all the affidavits, and um, I got a call from Paul Morrissey on my mobile, and he said, oh, I had dinner with Vincent last night, and your painting's been denied. And I said to him, well, that's very strange, because the board don't meet for a week. So this decision was premeditated, and I had a problem with that. Usually when you call the board, you get, you, you, there's an answer phone. But luckily one time the board called me and they, the number came up on my phone, so I had the direct line. <laughs> so then, of course, I started terrorizing them. And I spoke to Sally King near all the time, and she said, she said, um, a Warhol didn't work like this in, in 1965. Um, he made everything in the factory. And I had to point out, well, that's not true because the silver Huguen blooms were made by Billy Kluver. The cow wallpaper was made off-site in a wallpaper factory and the, the sculptures were made in a Knickerbocker machine and foundry, all, everything off-site. Warhol was making films in there, so, I got, she, so she took a pause and they then said, well, we don't care what you find, we're never authenticating your painting. What I don't understand is if all the people who were at the factory at that time, uh, who went to this party, who used the equipment, who shot things with it, who remembered the deal with Extract, and Paul Morrissey, who organized the deal, why they've all written letters to the board um, explaining this, why, they, why they're still denying this picture. They never called me, never. Uh, never and, and, no, and even the people who write the books avoid me. This was very odd. The people who are actually there in the 1960s and 70s are being ignored. They're not even being asked what happened. And when they tell you what happened, they're being told, no, it didn't happen that way. And, um, and I think it's one reason why, of all the authentication committees and boards, I've never, ever heard the number of complaints on both sides of the Atlantic uh, uh, that we've heard about the Andy Warhol Authentication Board. I've just never heard this um, kind of outcry. The plot was still thickening. As it turns out, Joe Simon isn't the only person with authentication blues. The O.K. Harris Gallery in New York's Soho is owned by Ivan Karp, the man often credited with discovering Warhol. He helped bring him into the world of fine art, advising him, finding buyers for his early paintings, even doing his interviews for him. Someone Warhol trusted absolutely. Ivan's contested pictures were, it seems, also made under unusual circumstances. Ivan. Yes. Hi. How nice to see you again. <laughs> Welcome downtown. <laughs> is this the famous piece that was out, supposed to be out in Michigan? Uh, this is the piece... Film at some, at some college someplace? Yeah, exactly. A group of students in a Michigan college, under the guidance of their professor, solicited from Andy Warhol an image of himself, which they asked him how to produce as a painting and he instructed them in the screening process. And they produced these two images, portrait images of Warhol, which he subsequently signed, he signed one of the two, uh, at the college itself where he came for a visit and said nothing. You know. So nobody, dis I mean, the authentication board does not dispute the signature, and it's, it's confirmed by the, by the students who I heard from, and by the professor, who's a friend of mine. He said he was there, and he was there, and he signed it. He confirmed that he thought this picture was a satisfactory Warhol production. These two pictures, or one of them at least, was already authenticated by Vincent Fremont. Can you tell us about that? You discovered. Yes, I have a letter from Vincent saying that this appears to be a work by Andy Warhol, which appears to be signed by Andy Warhol. When you submitted them, what was your expectation? Well, I had sold them here to a couple of people, and they submitted it to the review board. And it was re rejected, it was stamped unaccepted, whatever it is that they stamp on the back of the painting. Denied. And uh, denied, right. And the people who had submitted the paintings brought them back to me and demanded a refund of their money, 
which I was obliged to do, you know. Uh, Twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars—a big, <laughs> big, a bit of a jolt when it happened, you know. And then I had the paintings in my possession, and I decided, well, I, with my credentials, I would resubmit the paintings to the review board, and they were again rejected. And there's another stamp on the back of the picture, denied. And they wrote me a, a very elaborate explanation, saying, "We do not pass on the authenticity of signatures; we only pass on the making process of the picture." They were rejected by the Authentication Review Board for having been made under incorrect circumstances, if I can review the term. It's a curious thing. They only stamped one of the two images. They didn't stamp the one with the signature. There is absolutely no evidence that Andy Warhol ever showed up at this art school. Ever. Ever. But his signature was on the picture, and it's not a forgery. How can you say that? I he could have signed it. Ten years later, we don't know when he signed it. Well, if he did sign it ten years later, I would submit there's some evidence there that he authorized it in some way. Uh, he might have been saying it looks like a Warhol, but I didn't do it. No, why would he say it looks like a Warhol? Wouldn't do it. Why would he sign I it? I mean, my, the, no, point, no, the point, I, I, the point I, I, is, 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 is that signatures are, are everybody takes that as a as a kind of a, a, t a tablet from Mount Sinai. It's not so. If you sign my baseball cap, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Uh, what does that tell me about your signature? W what are you telling me in that signature? That you're happy to give me your autograph as a, as a BBC director? Well, okay. D did you intend anything else about that signature? I just want my paintings cleared. I want them authenticated. I want freedom <laughs> for them. <laughs> I take it I can say this. It's not about the money because... Why not? Why is it also a little bit about the money? I'm out $30,000. I lost figures. I can't even speculate on what they'd be worth now. Probably over a hundred thousand dollars in God's name. I would go live it up if I could sell those two pictures. You know, I might for spite keep them. So you don't believe that the art school um, had asked permission of Warhol to do this work? Absolutely not. And that he had supported and assisted them? Absolutely not. And so, uh, so the whole thing was just made up. Yes, except for the signature. I don't know about the signature. But then if the signature isn't made up, why would Warhol sign something? I, 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 I don't know. It, but all I can say is we have one piece of the puzzle, we have a signature. We're assuming the signature. But that doesn't that suggest that Ivan Karp is a, a liar and a cheat? No, 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 not at all. Just duped? Lots of people buy, get, they get carried away and buy things, and they get carried away with stories. There's not a piece out there of any, by any artist that doesn't have a story attached to it. Everybody has a story. Well, everybody's got a story. We spoke to the professor in Michigan, Ray Fleming, whose class made the pictures, and he was quite clear that Warhol did visit the college and subsequently signed one of the pictures. Ivan Karp is OK about all this, for now. He's understanding about the difficulties facing the board. And I don't think there's an evil conspiracy on the part of the board to deny some works and accept others. They have a difficult task in sorting through a mass of material, you know. And they have to probably establish between them an abiding principle. I'm not acquainted with that principle. I think we can all agree that if Andy Warhol conceives the idea, says to one of his assistants, here's how we should do it, then supervises that assistant's execution of that, and then approves of that after he supervises that 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 assistant in working, then that's a Warhol. But the problem is that these criteria are completely unworkable when applied to much of Andy's work in the 70s and 80s, such as his portraits of the rich and famous. There were literally thousands of these celebrity portraits. In fact, the volume was so great that they had to be produced off-site in what were effectively print sweatshops. That man over there, Horst Weber von Buren, actually ran one of the print shops. He was responsible for making 3,000 paintings and over 10,000 prints. Works such as these are regarded as genuine Warhols, even though they fail the authentication board's test of being supervised by Andy. He was not interested in supervising. He only communicated by telephone. He took the Polaroid. He sometimes had ideas. 
how to play 